Kare Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. We're going to explore some interesting color combinations today. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have Thalo Blue Red Shade, Lemon Yellow, Quinacridone Red, Raw Sienna, and Burnt Sienna. In the center of the palette, he made a premix of Thalo Blue and Burnt Sienna to create a lovely dark green. The Kansen rough paper is taped to a flat board. Heinrich uses a Wahong No. 1 Hake brush to wet the paper two-thirds down up to a low horizon line. He wants to create a larger sky area with a foreground covering the bottom third of the paper. He starts off with a silver black velvet number 12 round and a fairly strong mix of thalo blue for the top of the sky. He uses the tip of the brush and randomly places patches of the blue which he then gently works into the wet paper, leaving some white spaces for clouds. He cleans the brush and then uses raw sienna very softly for the lighter areas in the sky. The raw sienna is ideal here as it won't cause a green sky when it combines with a blue. To add a bit of shadow to the clouds, he adds a tiny touch of Quinn Red with the tip of the brush. Here he adds some of the dark grayish green that he mixed. When it mixes with the quin red on the paper, it creates a beautiful gray shadow. He keeps blending the colors in the sky to make sure there are no hard lines. Allow the painting to dry. He adds some Quinn Red and Thalo Blue to the center mix to create an interesting violet which he then uses to paint the mountains in the background. This is done wet on dry so the mountains have a hard edge which brings them slightly forward. To make them more interesting he adds some of the other colors from the palette. He uses burnt sienna to start the foreground and again varies the terrain by using all the colors on his palette. The mixes are too many to mention so play around with what you have and see which interesting combinations you can come up with. 
Heinrich uses very little paint at a time. He dips the tip of the brush in the paint and then uses the tip and sometimes the belly to lay down the paint. When he uses the belly, he gets broken lines, dry brushing or scumbling lines. These help to preserve some of the white of the paper and gives texture and variation to the terrain. Sometimes he covers the white areas later, but it is always easier to preserve the white than it is to get it back. He uses water to soften some of the lines and to help spread the paint. Do not use too much water though. Dab the brush on a paper towel if you are not sure, as too much water will cause runbacks or cauliflowers and that is not always a good thing. If you want to know how you can use cauliflowers to your advantage, you can have a look at this video. The link is in the description below. Here he mixes some more of the purple that he used in the mountains. He will paint this in the immediate foreground so it will tie up with the mountains and the bit of purple in the sky to harmonize the painting. He tries to use the same color variations on both sides of the painting to help balance the composition. Note also that the terrain is not painted in solid straight lines. He undulates the marks and he varies the direction of the strokes to give the terrain a more natural flow. Let the painting dry again thoroughly. He mixes phthalo blue, quin red and burnt sienna to get the purple again. He adds a touch of lemon yellow to give it a grayer shade. He uses the silver black velvet number 2 round and the shadow color to add the form shadows to the mountains in the background. Form shadows give definition or shape to an object. By adding these shadows, the mountains look more realistic and interesting. Before it was a uniform line, but the shadows now create different hills which clearly varies in distance from the viewer. He mixes burnt sienna with phthalo blue to create a dark brown for the trees. He draws the trunks and branches and grounds the trees so they don't look like ants.
He mixes a bit of blue and yellow and uses the belly of the brush to create the foliage in the trees. Notice that he uses very little paint for this. He will use the same colors and techniques for all the trees. The trees closer to the front will be a bit darker and the trees in the background will be lighter. This helps to create depth. Heinrich splatters some paint to give a bit of texture. It is always a good idea to put a paper towel on your sky area. Splatters can be unpredictable. If they fall in the wrong place, you can dab them out immediately or wait until they have dried and then lift them out with a clean damp brush. Splatters in the sky can also miraculously become a flock of birds. He adds some shadow lines and more trees and leaves to fill out the terrain. The trees are not all painted at the same height or distance. This helps to create the illusion of distance. He paints a few lines underneath the trees to ground them and to resemble some shadow.
Here he adds a few dots of splattering in the foreground for texture. Now he starts to build the values in the trees and the terrain. So far, we only have light and middle values in the painting. To give it a more dimensional look, you need to add some darks. Again, he uses all the colors on his palette. He adds some burnt sienna to the foreground to give it a bit of warmth and to bring it a bit more forward. He keeps adding shadows to define the trees and terrain some more. He again mixes a dark greenish brown with burnt sienna and phthalo blue and he will use this for the final darkest values in the foreground. If you have found this video helpful, please leave us a comment. It really helps us a lot. And you are also welcome to share your paintings with us on Instagram.
please like and subscribe if you haven't already and thank you for watching we hope to see you soon bye con dios